frustrating Monday after a Lions loss, and you're here with us. So again, it's much appreciated. Let's get into it. It's our takeaways. And I... This has been a, a you know an interesting season because we've had a lot of victory Mondays, which you know what I'll take. It's been a lot of fun. But Sam, the sicko in me <laughs> likes to break down L's. Yeah. I do because we we get to kind of regroup and break it all down. I want to start with you because I got a lot of my feelings out last segment. Yeah, all right, give me your takeaways, Sam Flannel. Everything from what you saw yesterday. All right, so I've noticed a disturbing trend in the last seven games or so. I think we would all agree that in their last seven games, after that game at Tampa Bay, which I think was their best game of the year, their next seven, they, they have gone four and three, but there have been a couple of disturbing trends that reared their ugly head in this game in particular. Number one, I just want to get this out there. The Lions are, they're still nine and four, but they have a minus six turno turnover differential on Ooh. the season. And that is one of the, the things that reared their ugly head in this game. In this game against the Bears, the, the Lions lost the turnover battle 3-0, and that's one thing that the Lions have consistently done over the last seven games. But another thing that they've done, which can be equally as disturbing and even more prevalent, is they've given up some really big games to certain quarterbacks, particularly mobile ones, because... Justin Fields is a quarterback who obviously shows some flashes, but he's also prone to make a lot of mistakes throwing the football, fumbling, throwing interceptions. But in his couple games against the Bears, including this one, I'll just get to this one. Justin Fields had one of his best games of the season. He had that beautiful throw to DJ Moore for a touchdown off of a fourth and 13. We'll get to that a little bit more later. He had a rushing touchdown on a third and 11 in the, in the red zone. And he also escaped a couple of times in which he would look dead to rights and scrambled for for first downs. Justin Fields played very, very well and definitely outplayed Jared Goff and definitely gave the Detroit Lions defense a ton of fits. And that leads me to this because in that game, both the turnovers and giving up a big game to us to a quarterback reared their ugly head. In the last seven games, including this one, I'll kind of briefly break them down, all of them. The Lions have either one, badly lost the turnover battle, or two, given up a legacy game to certain quarterbacks. I'll go through it. In the game against the Baltimore Ravens, we all know Lamar Jackson played one of the greatest games of his life. The Lions defense gave up Lamar Jackson's season high in quarterback rating, QBR, and it gave up Lamar Jackson's only three touchdown no pick game of the season. In their win against the Las Vegas Raiders, the Lions lost the turnover battle 3-1. to one. Fortunately, they played the Jimmy Garoppolo led Raiders and right. still were able to win, but still, those are things that eventually come back to bite you when you play better teams and they most certainly have in their game at the Los Angeles Chargers even though they won and that was one of their more impressive wins going to Los Angeles and winning they gave up a season high in touchdown passes to Justin Herbert so that happened as well and then we go to the game against the Chicago Bears in which the uh the Lions gave up they uh they lost the turnover battle four to one and gave up the only 100 yard rushing game of the season to justin Fields. so in that game they kind of did a little bit of both in the game against the green bay packers they lost the turnover battle three to zero plus gave up the season high in quarterback rating qbr and gave up three touchdowns and zero interceptions to jordan love probably the best game of his career just so happened to, to go come against the detroit lions even the game at the new orleans saints they won the turnover battle and those turnover were absolutely crucial in them winning that game because it gave the Lions two short field touchdowns. But even, even their performance against Derek Carr, the Lions defense, kind of disturbed me a little bit because they gave up the season high in completion percentage to Derek Carr and uh, an over 100 quarterback rating to Derek Carr. And Derek Carr is not having one of his better seasons. And I will die on the hill that if Derek Carr doesn't get knocked out of the game, the Lions probably lose, or at the very least, they give up the go-ahead touchdown and maybe have enough time to tie the game or win it with a touchdown. But still, in each of the Lions' last seven games, they have either given up basically a legacy game to a quarterback, sometimes a quarterback who we weren't too high on until that game, or they've lost a turnover battle, and in several occasions have done both. And you just happen to do both against the Chicago Bears and it bit you. And one more stat before I give it back to Jeff Iafredi. In the two games against the Chicago Bears this year, you're lucky as hell to be one and one in, the, in those, by the way. Mm -hmm. The Lions have lost the turnover battle a combined seven to one. Jesus. Seven to one. That's bad. Yes. And that's that's kind of been the storyline. And my takeaway, because we'll get into, you know, a couple different things. I mean, it's hard enough to win football games in December when you're undisciplined. 
you 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 are is committing as many penalties as they are committing and it's not just the penalties it's when you commit them the other part of it is turnovers which for jared goff that has been the the theme of his career before detroit you look at his turnovers he's on pace to have more turnovers uh, in a season that he's ever had in Detroit, at least. So again, this is kind of trending back to LA, which is why the Rams got rid of Jared Goff and got Matthew Stafford and proceeded to win a Super Bowl with a similar roster. And again, and I know for a while there, Jared Goff, he, he was playing well. He he was, and even I you know, came on this show in front of this mic and said, you know what? I'd be open to a short-term extension, not 50 million, but a $40 million deal, roughly around that number, I'd be cool with it. But then you start to think, and you start to look around, and you think, okay, Philadelphia Eagles, Jalen Hurts, you bring up his turnovers, cool, he's more mobile, uh, so he has that, and Jalen Hurts also has one of the best, if not the best, passer rating when trailing. So if you want to go, well, Jalen Hurts has as many turnovers, good luck with that argument. Uh, if you want to go Dak Prescott, which is somebody that I've came after a ton, Sam Flannel, I'll admit it, he's playing his best ball. That dude's in the MVP conversation. He's leading, I think. Him or Brock Purdy. And Dak Prescott's been balling. You want to go to Brock Purdy. Okay, say what you want about him. Seventh round pick. He's balling. And again, you bring up the roster he's on, that's fine. But for Jared Goff, it is concerning. Now for me, my takeaway is, you can't give this man an extension. Hmm. You can't. You can't. Now, the only way I would for you know see a scenario in which you do give Goff an extension would be Hendon Hooker completely stinks and you have no other option. That would be the only way. If Hendon Hooker is that bad and you don't have another option, yeah, Jared Goff's a guy that, you know, a handful of teams would, would want on their roster. But is he a guy that could take you over the top? And is he a guy you'd like to sacrifice and pay him $50 million and have to lose other pieces, key pieces on this roster? Is Jared, Go uh, is Jared Goff a guy that can elevate a roster? No. He's a quarterback you can win with. We knew this. I knew this. He's a quarterback that can win playoff games. Great. And the goal this year is still to win a playoff game. But Sam Flannel, you play like that. Jared Goff plays like that. But the defense plays like that. And the amount of penalties they have, they keep that up. You ain't winning nothing. You ain't. You won't even beat whoever they face in, in the wild card. I don't give a damn who it is. So can this team play better? Obviously. They have no choice but to. But Jared Goff's play... This is this is starting to kind of it, it's starting to be a trend now, right? It, a one game or two game sample size, ah, it's a slump. A multi game sample size, maybe it's a trend, mm. and that's concerning because again, the Bears, yeah, they're playing good football, cool, they're fine, they, they look better. Matt Eberflus, for God's sakes, won two games in a row, first time in his career in, in Chicago. You allowed that man to break a milestone. He won two games in Chicago in a row for the first time in his entire career so that's great but for Jared Goff it is concerning it absolutely is concerning and I, I would expect all the people out there the Jared Goff defenders which again feel how you feel to at least think about it mm. if you're still waking up on this Monday morning and you're saying that that's QB1 for the next five years I don't know what the hell you're smoking and you might have went to dispo by the way they got great products but Jared Goff is not the answer, man. He's not. And I know the heavyweights got a lot of flack because they're a lot they're they're aggressive with the the golf slander. I've always been in kind of the middle. I got a lot of respect for Goff, but I also understood that Jared Goff, you you trust this man to go to Philly? I mean, no. no. <laughs> you you can't trust him to go to Chicago in inclement weather. And guys, Justin Fields played in the same conditions. The same conditions. It's not like there was a dome around Justin Fields while he was playing. Same conditions. He looked better. You got outplayed by a, a guy named Justin Fields who everyone would call a running back. Everyone would call a bust. Everyone Stick. Would, I mean, it is, it is what it is. Even I don't like Justin Fields. He outplayed Jared Goff, the man that you want and many people want. I don't want to point fingers at anybody. That would be okay with giving this man a four-year deal. Uh, that's the concern. Uh, so, guys, if you want takeaways, yeah, the defense is a problem, but they, they need talent. Like that, I can't just keep saying that they're a problem. We know they've been a problem before the season. We know they, they would be a problem. The defense isn't complete yet. Brad Holmes, Mike's another takeaway. Draft ev every single pick in this draft should be a defensive player. Every <laughs> single every single draft pick should be on defense. Yeah. If you want to take an offensive lineman. Great. A guard, a, a center in case Frank Ragnall goes down. Awesome. 
but every single pick is a defensive player. I don't want to hear nothing less. Every, you know what? Every signing should be a defensive player. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> let's just, let's JB, just sign a tight end. JB, am I, am I off here? Anything I said you disagree with? No, I, I right. completely agree. I think you're going to have to sit here and reevaluate if Jared Goff is your future moving forward. If he's that actual guy, and if you're willing to sit here and spend all this money on this guy, if he's just going to be here for another two years and have the same result over and over and over again. Like, we, we have aspirations for this team, and it can't slow down now because of one person. If that be Jared Goff, then, hey, you got to sit here and learn to cut ties. And if that's AG, then Dan Campbell's got to sit here and step up and be like, hey, you're my friend, but, you know, I'm making better business choices as it is right now for this team. So whatever it is, you need to sit down, reevaluate, and then move forward from there. I, I think it, we've gone long enough for – being friends and businesses right now that, hey, when it comes to business, we have to continue on and move forward if you're not going to help us out. And Brad Holmes, I think, has approached this thing very, very uh, impressive. I I've actually been impressed with how Brad's approached this. He takes a hand and hooker in the third round, you know, and, and he has him kind of sitting, uh, you know, just kind of getting healthy, working back. And he lets this golf storyline just kind of play out. He didn't fully commit to golf, right? There hasn't been a contract extension. You haven't really heard much of it. And it is a wait and see approach, which I actually love for Brad Holmes. Like it, it's a very, very smart way to do business. Go out there and prove it, prove it. Because Jared, Goff, we have they, they have yet to make the playoffs. This is what if you want to extend Jared Goff, you're looking at the postseason. You're not looking at beating Tampa Bay. You're not looking at beating up on on, on Green Bay at Lambeau, even though they beat you at Ford Field. That's not what you're looking at. You're looking at how do, how do we match up with the Dallas Cowboys, which, by the way, you'll face later in the year in Dallas. That's going to be a tough one. And you look at the schedule. The schedule looks a lot harder. The Denver Broncos, they're playing well, Sam. Yep. And I'm not even going to go there. They're playing well. And you yep. play them on Saturday at Ford Field, that ain't going to be easy either. So, and they're motivated. The Chiefs just dropped the game. They're chasing their own division. So, again, uh, you're, it, it, the schedule does not get any easier. And I don't want this to be a slander golf thing where I call him bad. And all. He's a good quarterback. We know exactly what golf is. He's good. He's not great. You, if you have an offense that you think can be dynamic, golf isn't – he, he's not the guy that's going to make your offense dynamic, right? you got to have everything scripted for him. you got to have – 